This is Twit. Apple, Google, and Microsoft together on May 5th announced yeah. Yeah. that they are going to expand support of the FIDO standard, F-I-D-O, and the FIDO Alliance, which is a passwordless sign-in standard. I think everybody in, uh, certainly Microsoft has been saying this for a long time. Yeah. Everybody agrees passwords have got to go. Yeah. And uh, the FIDO Alliance seems to be the closest thing, except for Steve Gibson's squirrel, which unfortunately I don't mm. know how nobody seems to want to <laughs> adopt. Um, the expanded standards, this is from Apple's press release, the expanded standards-based capabilities will give websites and apps the ability to offer an end-to-end -end passwordless option. Users will sign in through the same action they take multiple times each day to unlock their devices. So fingerprint, face, yeah, it's like a, a token pin. basically. So once yeah. you're once you're logged into your device, then you're automatically logged in, is that it to the websites or it just automatically says hello? The authentication Basic. generates a token. We token know it's him because he, yeah. or her. Uh, the, essentially, the the entity that wants to be authenticated doesn't do the authentication itself. It sim just simply asks the device you're device. using, "Hey, is this person who he yeah. claims to be?" And that's it. This which, seems which is right because exactly because the the fingerprint on my phone is way better than any password that I can remember. And if I want to have something, if I want to base my login on something even more secure than that, saying that here is a physical device that I have to have that will only work with between these two hours in this physical location, I could switch to that too. It is such a long overdue thing, and it solves a hard problem that nobody, uh, no, that no user likes because you you have you have to have strong passwords, but strong passwords is the, are the enemy. Of of, uh, of, sec of security because people are going to choose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the eighth time that they have to reset their password. <laughs> I hope Steve Gibson uh, covers this uh, on security <laughs> now today or at some time now soon. There, I don't want to be a pooper of the parties here, but like they, they do have to be careful with this. Like For example, Google has a very good authentication system. They have a very bad re-authentication system. The difference, well, first, they shouldn't have both, but they do. They're both separate things and they have separate feature sets. So for example, if I go to log into my Gmail account, and it doesn't recognize me, it'll say, do you want to use Authenticator? Do you want to have an SMS if you have that set up? Do you want to have a, another device? Like, do you want to get your Pixel phone or your iPhone? And that's all great. But for the re-auth, it'll just say, you need to find iPhone 5. And I have no idea what iPhone 5 is. I have no idea where it is. Yeah. might be in a different part of the world. might be in a drawer. I might have sent it back to Apple. Do you want to use a different <laughs> method? Sorry, you can't. Well, in uh, theory, and that's happened, like, so many Fido times would solve traveling. this. And maybe that's, maybe I, I hope Google will go to this. Um, According to the Apple press release, one of the things FIDO does is allow users to automatically access their credentials, uh, sometimes you use the word passkey, on many devices, yeah. even new ones, without having to re-enroll every account. So you mm -hmm. can, I guess Apple or Google or Microsoft would act as a trusted third party. You could say, hey, Microsoft, new device, please authenticate this one, and then the authentication goes forwards. It also enab enables users to use FIDO authentication on their mobile device to sign into an app or website on a nearby device, regardless of yeah. independent of OS or browser. So I have my iPhone. This is now becoming, and I think this is, this makes a lot of sense. This is my authenticator, and I have my iPhone, and I pu I put it near my PC, my Windows PC, and the PC says, "I see it's you, Leo, because you've authenticated using Face ID." That's a yeah. that is a. I would love It'll to see that. Challenge you for like yeah. a bank. The banks are doing that it already. Does. They're challenging you yeah. to get on a device app. Yeah. It, it, it does it does also illustrate another possible pr uh, thing that we need to watch out for that if government services do uh, are a thing that is on the surface quite responsible and saying that hey look we're not going to allow people to access your accounts to access your information unless we're going to demand this higher level of authentication this higher level of security which is good for most people but now you can't have a system in which uh, like uh, the state government for uh, for government benefits for your snap benefits they can't say oh well we we won't authenticate you unless you have a smartphone with these capabilities because a lot of the people oh, who that's require right. these services don't have these things. So yeah, there has to be a fallback. It has to accommodate people yeah. who are not going to have the technology. And I also be concerned that it's somewhat less secure because it's single factor. It's just biometrics. Yeah. So I, I would hope there would be a way to say, no, and I want a second factor in addition right. to the biometric. It's sort of like one and a half because you it's, you have to have the object as well. So you have to be like the thing that you are, your fingerprint, and, and the object that will recognize uh, So it is still two-factor, like, isn't it? You're device. right. Yeah. yeah. You're well, right. one and a half, I'm not going to go all the way to two. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I can understand that these companies would like to make it easier 
uh, they understand the current system is v horribly insecure because most users reuse passwords. They don't have yeah. good passwords. I mean, it's already they so bad them always. that anything better is going to be more secure. But it, is it as secure as people like us who know what we're doing, who use two factories, use a YubiKey, for instance, and Touch ID? And so can we make it as secure as we want it to be? Yes, it's better for most people. Yeah. But is it going to be another factor? If you is want it going to be dumbing it yeah. down? Yeah. My my yeah. my understanding of the standard is that it's it's agnostic, so that whatever, so that if I decide that no 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 I want to have the secure key plugged into a USB C port plus this other form of authentication, Good. But so long as that so long as that step has been achieved, the site at the other end doesn't care how it's been achieved. So yeah. if I and if I do want to have a password like one two three four five six seven eight and no authority is preventing me from doing that, I could also do that. But as soon as as soon as people say, "Oh, look, the people who have a phone made in the past five, six, or seven years," as soon as they say, "Well, just put, touch your uh, fingerprint authenticate on this device, and now you're you're good for pretty much everywhere you go." How do you, you know solve that? this for people who don't have a phone? As you as you pointed out, Andy, this is problematic. I think I, I think you have to I think you have to stick to like old fashioned like really really strong passwords. It's it's a I, I don't know what this what the solution would be. Uh, a, a non this is the, this is a solution that if you have technology you're golden. If you don't have technology, you kind of have to stick with the old stuff. But you have to make sure that there is always that other door. Just, just like every other every time there is a, a, a big in initiative of saying hey for, from now on all of your government benefits can be paid electronically into uh, into uh, into a bank account early. We're going to have a portal website so that you don't have to go to eight different sites to manage. This is one desktop for everything. You always have to have that 800 number. You always have to have that phone line for people who just yep. have access to a telephone and are lucky to have that. You have to account for people who don't have uh, a fixed address that or don't even have access to banking. That uh, there, it's because it's these one, two, three percent, sometimes ten percent uh, of the population that need these services the most and are, are going to be suffering the most if they get shut out.